uh, that though he doesn't completely agree with them, he's going to vote for popular unity. And because it has some people who worked with him in the Ministry of uh, Finance very well, who, who did the only positive thing that Syriza uh, was able to do, <laughs> these things that were considered to be uh, unilateral elections, and now under the Troika deal, they are being uh, reversed. Mm -hmm. uh, Polls show popular unity around 3 to 5 percent, uh, somewhat safely in Parliament. But I expect a lot more. Uh, and if anything, if anything good is going to come, Greece will come from that. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Always, uh, always illuminating. So we'll be turning to you again, uh, maybe as early as Sunday night, but certainly next week. And we'll be back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio, Webster Tarpley in Washington, D.C. Now, let's look for a minute at the Federal Reserve. Boy, I dusted off my slogan, Tarpley for Fedhead, Tarpley for Fedhead, hashtag Tarpley, number four, Arabic four, Fedhead. Looking at the unfortunate Yellen and her uh, incompetence. Here's the story, right? There was a big brouhaha this week that the Federal Reserve was finally going to start raising interest rates. Now, what is the argument for raising interest rates? It's, of course, it's that the rentier, the rich guys, people with masses of money, don't like the fact that their money is not multiplying the way they want it to multiply. For most of us, crushed by debt, the American people in general, loaded with consumer debt, loaded with student loan debt, and above all, the, the, uh, the credit card debt, which is a floating rate. In other words, they can raise it. Those rates have been sky high since the era of Paul Adolf Volcker under Carter and Reagan, bipartisan ripoff of the American people. We have all of uh, these um, you, this uh, excessive uh, interest rates, right? usually, to be sure, going on. Uh, the argument is that the rentiers are not happy. They want more, a higher return on their money. From the average person's point of view, it just means a higher rate. If you have a floating rate mortgage still, God help you, that's going to punish you. And if you've got a credit card, they're going to feel free to uh, rip you off even more. So uh, the problem is that uh, keeping the interest rates at zero is better than raising them to 0.25%. Uh, but the problem is that's also not going to get you out of the depression. In other words, the 0% rate is mainly going for hot money. It's mainly going to prop up derivatives. Remember, there are two pillars of this fake uh, recovery, which has been engineered. Quantitative easing was one side of it, and the 0% interest rates were the other side. Quantitative easing now withdrawn as of almost a year ago, increased volatility. Uh, you can see that they're uh, frightened of the Chinese bubble economy, the Chinese bubble economy dragging down the U.S. This should never have been allowed. We should have put up uh, defenses against that kind of thing. But with these free marketeers, it's hopeless. So um, what we need is to break with the idea that the central bank serves banks only. That's a, bank, that's a ridiculous idea. The central bank has got to become a national bank. It's got to be nationalized, seized, deprivatized in whole or in part, but it's got to come down to serving the entire economy, including full employment. Now, they, by law, the Fed is supposed to pursue full employment as well as price stability. That's the Humphrey Hawkins Act. They simply ignore it. They're lawless. Well, again, we could use their lawlessness to force them to put out $6 trillion, $5 trillion, in 0% 100-year credit to rebuild U.S. infrastructure, 30 million new productive jobs. We've also got a matter of about 10 million entry-level uh, Marshall Plan for the cities jobs, primarily for uh, inner-city youth and rural America, uh, people who otherwise might have a hard time getting into the workforce. Now, in the course of Yellen's uh, 
press conference, she says that at least one member of the Federal Reserve Board, right, the, the Federal Open Market Committee, uh, wants to have negative interest rates. In other words, they would charge you, the Fed would charge member banks to hold reserves. Now, if we're scraping the bottom of the barrel in this way, why not go to what we can call the lautenbach Wojtynski solution? Uh, this was the one thing that could have prevented Hitler from taking over. It would have been two uh, billion marks at that time. Today, it's going to be $5 trillion because things have gotten bigger. But in those days, it would have been two trillion marks put out, or Reichsmarks put out by the Reichsbank under Weimar Germany to build the autobahns, in a word, and about a million to two million jobs. That would have cut Hitler off at the knees. He never would have been able to ride this wave of despair, right, the austerity psychosis that was uh, going around at the time. So I, I say to Yellen, uh, what you're doing is a, an absolute poverty of ideas, an aridity uh, unwillingness to think outside the box. We need, and this is now the rising tide, right? Corbyn in uh, England, right? The Labour Party comes into power with what? Quantitative easing for the people. And it means almost 600 billion US dollar equivalent uh, investments by the central bank in um, transportation, digital infrastructure, education, uh, infrastructure and so forth. So that would be that would be a significant stimulus uh, for Great Britain. My own figure for Great Britain, I think, is in the area of two to three uh, uh, trillion uh, pounds. But uh, this is at least a step in the right direction. Same thing going on in Greece. Varoufakis and others were uh, at least toying with the idea of seizing control of the central bank. And in Donetsk, uh, they've been doing it, right? Boris Litvinov and others. So the whole movement. It seems to be peripheral. It seems to be isolated. But the movement of modern times is to break private banking control of the central banking system, not to abolish them. No, 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 because the American people want credit creation for job creation, 30 million jobs, and that's going to be paid for by the Fed with 0% federal credit for 100 years if necessary, and that extra trillion to refinance, refinance all student loans down to zero percent, and if it's if it's uh, one and a half trillion, that's fine too. All student loans go down to zero percent interest rates, and guess who's going to scream and squeal? Those same yeah, right? The people who rip you off. Uh, this would be another way to fight payday loans. Let's have a zero percent uh, credit facility for families that are destitute, facing foreclosure, some good 0% or close to 0% federal credit could come in and save the day. So this is what uh, what we're about. Um, and this is precisely what the this entire, uh, the European Plan B, essentially, the, I, I did an outline of Plan B for Greece uh, before uh, that election took place. And the idea was, try to get control of the central bank any way you can, and uh, or a piece of it, and force them to put out credit for production, for infrastructure, and for these jobs. Now, speaking of uh, these issues, let's look at the uh, Republicans. Now, um, the Republican debate this week was an appalling spectacle. One of the main uh, ideas, the only consolation I can offer anybody, is that uh, when you see evil fighting evil, and that is what you saw, when evil fights evil, the good may benefit. That's the only thing that's kept this world going. And we saw that in action on the Republican stage. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. So the Republicans, uh, the only consolation, when evil fights evil, the good may benefit. So a certain amount of uh, extreme evil was canceled out as these various evil forces, essentially a battle among fascist gangs. The higher the casualties on all sides, the better off uh, the people are in the, uh, in the aftermath. Notice the secessionist has gone down to defeat. A secessionist scoundrel, sic semper secessionistus, 
secessionistis, we would say a little bit of macaroni Latin. Uh, that was Rick Perry. Remember him? In the uh, great uh, dawn of the Tea Party, he started talking about Texas secessionism. He's gone down the tubes and a much deserved fate for a scoundrel and a demagogue. Uh, and uh, it can be, so, so it, will it be for some of these others? We're getting reports that Scott Walker, the union buster, the wage gouger, enemy of unions, enemy of the American people, that Scott Walker is also about to drop out. Because even with all that catch money that he's supposedly, allegedly been uh, collecting, it just, it just doesn't go. The guy's dull as dishwater. He's, uh, he's, this is the banality of evil, as Anna Arendt would have said. So uh, Carly Fiorina. Uh, Carly Fiorina worked uh, as an advisor to the Central Intelligence Agency. Carly Fiorina, not only an advisor, but also a consultant to the Central Intelligence Agency. Now, who's hyping Carly Fiorina? Um, a bubbling cauldron of hatred, uh, you know, extremely neurotic, uh, beyond all belief. Notice she got really upset when Trump, the great wrecking ball and Samson of this temple of the Philistines, when he began to talk about what she did at Lucent and what she did at um, the Hewlett Packard. This is when she began, she began to, uh, to get uh, the eye blink rate went up uh, very high. So what did she do? Uh, Lucent Technologies. I'll have to tell you, this is something that hurt me very much uh, personally, right? Lucent Technologies was in Murray Hill, New Jersey. This was the Bell Telephone Laboratories, Bell Labs. I had a chance to visit Bell Labs in the late 1950s as a child. Uh, my uncle worked there. And my uncle Al took me there. It was a wonderful thing for him to do, fond memories of this day. He showed me the dead room, the dead room is the was at that time the world's largest anechoic chamber, which was a completely uh, surrounded, baffled uh, chamber where no sound from the outside penetrated. And you could hear your heartbeat. You could hear your own joints moving. You could hear your own digestion going on in the dead room. On this occasion of this visit, I saw the first touch tone phone I'd ever seen. Up to that time, there were dial tone, dial, dial phones, but now it was a touch tone phone, the first one uh, which he showed me at that time. Well, Bell Labs had been one of the greatest sources of innovation and scientific discovery in the middle of the 20th century. Carly Fiorina destroyed it. She absolutely destroyed it. It's gone. Uh, from 1996 to 2006, uh, and it went uh, belly up, and it was bought up by a French uh, company. The shame of this, right? The, the impudence of this woman to come forward. She says, we did mass layoffs. Yeah, 30,000 jobs destroyed. This is now, I'm sorry, this is now Hewlett Packard. But Lucent was completely destroyed. At Hewlett Packard, Carly's job was so terrible that she was officially fired by the board of directors with, with prejudice. And we see her on television saying, yes, we did mass layoffs. We had to move those jobs to China. Uh, she got five corporate jets. She got uh, a salary increase of 300%. She got a total of $100 million dollars. Her golden parachute, her compensation package, was $20 million after she was fired for malfeasance and nonfeasance. And then, she, of course, she's got the CIA network working for her now to build her up. Who do you think is hyping her? That's a CIA old boys network. They take care of their own. Now, of course, we have got to look at the Republican Party debate uh, from the vantage point of the destruction of the uh, Republican Party. And that means... Uh, how this thing is going to come crashing down. Um, well, uh, one thing you might note, uh, when you have backup, some embarrassing facts don't come out. Rand Paul, in the first debate, was spared the fact that his campaign officials had been indicted for their role in the Iowa primary in the previous cycle. Um, this time it was Carly who benefited. Uh, when we got into that question about vaccines and immunization and all this, they focused on Trump. They let Carly off the hook. Carly is the one who campaigns uh, to try to convince parents that she 
she shares their fears about vaccine and related stuff. Uh, so she has got tremendous protection from the CIA networks. Rand has got his southern jurisdiction Scottish right. And it's a battle of networks in, in terms, and I don't mean television networks, I mean uh, Freemasonic and other uh, networks. Now, from Politico, we find the interesting fact that uh, the founder of the Trump clan in North America is Friedrich Trump. <laughs> Trump. Uh, this guy was a pimp. <laughs> we have uh, all kinds of uh, 